This is the Build Your Own Ansible lightsaber talk. It's got two components. We're going to talk about Ansible, so it's going to be really intro level there, and then a little bit about lightsaber. So first, what is Ansible? Ansible is a tool that lets you do um, make SSH connections to a large number of remote machines, and then uh, push commands over the wire to them. There's three modes that you can use Ansible in. Ad hoc is kind of just running one command uh, at a time on the remote machine. You can use it as an orchestration tool, which is really kind of doing the same thing, you know, running tasks on the remote machine, but it's more of a, a time when you are able to pre-plan and say, oh, well, you know, I have this set of five tasks that all kind of make one logical action, and I want to be able to run that on, on these remote machines. So if you have time to prepare that in advance, that's kind of where orchestration comes in. And configuration management is what people mostly associate with Ansible. Uh, configuration management is also about running tasks on remote machines, but instead of thinking about it in terms of, I want to do this thing on a remote machine, you think more along the lines of, I want to make the remote machine match this certain state. So here's some, ooh, that's not good. Can we turn off the lights? I really can. Um, can you guys see it or not? All the red looks very washed up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see it. You guys want to step forward? We could do that. Um, not highlighting it. Yeah. No, no. Oh, what is that, a PDF? No. Um. <laughs> oh, this is it. You could just read it. <laughs> I could just or read all it. the slides like that. Or all the slides. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> do what? Technical conferences. I don't know what to call the light. I assume they're not. Unless there are switches behind the screen, but I don't know. Really Oh, I see the volume. Yeah. Just turn all the lights off for everybody. You'll be fine. Oh, you're just going to change the... Oh, is this all in text? Um, Click that and apply. Oh, there we go. Now everything needs to be washed out. But no. we'll see. Who cares? It's got to be better, right? No, it's in... Why? <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't have to read the man pit. I mean, can you write an Ansible playbook for that? Yes. <laughs> Depends on my window manager. <laughs> okay, so these are ad hoc tasks. Uh, you know, really quickly, it's just kind of doing one task at a time. Uh, Ansible is the command I'm running here that I stands for inventory. Inventory is all the hosts that Ansible is going to know about. Here I'm just giving it two hosts on the command line, web server one and two. I'm telling it all, which means for all the hosts that you know about in inventory, go ahead and do this task. So the story behind this could be something like, oh, you know, I get a call at 10 p.m. and someone says, oh, the web app is broken, you know, it's doing all these bad things, you gotta go fix it right now. And you know, you start, you look at the code, you scare it, you do this and you do that, you finally come up with a fix at midnight, and you're like, now I gotta get this out to all my web servers and go to sleep so that in the morning, you know, I can do all the, everything correctly, check it in to get whatever else. 
So Ansible here is, is allowing me to copy using the copy module uh, the fixed file that I have on my server up to a different directory on the remote server uh, because the remote server is going to require special permissions. It won't work with just my SSH user that I'm logging in as. I need sudo and it's going to ask me for a password in order to do that. And then after I copy that file up, I'm going to run a second Ansible task here calling the service module this time until I go ahead and restart Apache on that machine so that it applies my solution. And oh, one thing about this, this second one, you can see the fork one. Uh, that's telling Ansible that instead of spawning off a new process for every, uh, every host here, I just want to have one process and that way I'll kind of serialize it and that way I won't end up you know, bouncing all the web servers at once and everyone's getting an outage. If parts of the web app are still working, doing it with fork one means that uh, those will work. Uh, users on this load balance system will see things continue to work the whole time. So here's the output. Uh, the first task I run, it makes this copy of the file. Uh, it Ansible asks me for the password, the sudo password, I type it in. It goes out, it uses SSH, I've got you know, public private keys set up so it doesn't have to ask me for a password for that. It, it then copies the file over to the remote system. And then it returns some JSON information here that tells me about uh, what it did. Change true means yes, it did in fact change the file. Uh, it wasn't the correct file to begin with, uh, so it switched the new one up. It gives me a checksum of, of the file, uh, destination to tell me where it put it, and then it's got some other you know, file system information about it. And you know, it just gives me uh, both web servers just telling me what happened on both. So if I had been experimenting like on one of those web servers live and I already had the file there, it would tell me change is false to that web server, but the other one would be changed true. And then the second task that I ran to do that uh, is returning less information because the service module doesn't have as much information that feels like it needs to give me. It's just telling me that change is true, it was a success, and that HTTP on that server is now running. So pretty simple. Uh, here's an example of orchestration. Orchestration is, is similar to running ad hoc tasks. Uh, we're just telling Ansible that you know, we want you to go and do this, that, and the other thing on the remote server. Uh, but instead of being at the command line and having to type everything out, we've, we've got the opportunity to pre-plan this. So in this orchestration task, what we're saying is we want to uh, run a yum update on the remote system. Uh, now, you know, sometimes a yum update, a package will get in there and say, oh, I, I really don't want to upgrade that package because it's kind of dangerous. I want to evaluate the changes first. So we're taking this, this logical action of updating my server to all the newest packages, and we're going to do it in four different tasks that allow us to stop right in the middle. So the first task is calling the yum module, and it's going to do a list. Uh, this is a parameter. Oh, so playbook. This is the first time you've seen a playbook. Uh, playbooks are YAML, and YAML is kind of a, a, a data structure format that's uh, text-based and easy for people to read. Uh, the top level of a playbook is uh, a list, so the, the hyphen introduces a list, and each list is a, each list entry is uh, called a play. Within a play, you can have a name field that gives you a way to describe it. Uh, so we're calling this one update our host. Host, which just like on the command line specifies which hosts that Ansible knows about in the inventory are going to get run. So once again, we're going to do them all, all of our machines. And then we have an entry called task. Um, so each of these is a dictionary key and then values. So the task dictionary key is going to reference another list, and we have four entries in that list. And those are the four tasks that we're going to run. So like when we're in ad hoc mode, you know, and we're just doing one task at a time. Uh, these each represent one of those types of tasks. Uh, we can name each of our tasks, and then the, the main part is, right here we say yum, so that is the module that we are going to go ahead and, and, uh, and use the yum module. We're tell, giving it the param list, and we're telling it we want to list all the updates. So it's going to copy that, command mod, uh, that yum module out to the remote system, and it's going to tell us to list the updates that are available on our system and return that information to us. Then we use register. Uh, 
in order to register the result into this updated variable so that we can access it later and use it in the playbook to decide what we want to do. Uh, if you notice, list is, is indented underneath yum. That means that it's a parameter of the yum module. It belongs to the yum module. Whereas register is out one level, and that means that it's a parameter of this task. So there are certain parameters that you can apply to any task, but register, um, and then the modules themselves also take parameters, and the indentation level can determine where those fall. Uh, second task here is debug. Debug just prints something to the screen. So in this case, we're telling it, take the var update, and inside of updates, there's an attribute result, and we're going to print that to the, to the screen. For the yum module, that's going to print uh, a list of packages, so that's kind of what we want. Next one is the pause module, and what pause does is it just pauses, cancels the execution, and it lets you decide what you want to do. So we're going to give it a prompt that says, okay, user, we want you to take a look at this list of packages. If you want to apply them, hit enter. If you decide, oh, there's something dangerous in there, I don't want to do it, hit control C, A, and then we can abort. And then finally, if the user didn't abort, then we're going to run the next task with sudo. It's the yum module again, but this time we're telling it, okay, for every single package that's installed, we want the latest version of that package, because that will actually run the update. So here's the output, uh, page one of the output. Uh, it, it starts up, it asks for the pseudo password again. We give it that case so that it can do that. Uh, it gathers facts. Gathering facts is an in implicit task that all the Ansible um, playbooks always do. And what it does is it gathers information about the, the remote systems that it's talking to. So it could decide, for instance, oh, this is these hosts are running Fedora. And so then if you wanted to in your playbook, you could uh, do something like, say, uh, write a conditional that says, if this is a Fedora machine or a Red Hat machine, then use the YUM module. If this is a um, if this is an Ubuntu machine or a Debian machine, then use the app module. And so you can manage a heterogeneous uh, environment approach that way. Then we get to our first task, which is that uh, YUM list one, and it goes out to the remote machine, it looks up that information, and then it returns it. It doesn't show it to us, instead it gives it, puts it in the register variable and passes it to the debug task that we specified. And then the debug task goes ahead and prints out the information. So Ansible is going through and it's applying these tasks to each host that we specify. So if you notice, um, in the inventory, I use an inventory in the command line again, Fedora 20 and 21. So it's saying, okay, so I have two hosts that I know about, so when you say do this to all the hosts, you mean these two hosts, because that's all it knows about. And so for each host, it runs and it finds the result. So on one host, it decides to use Zion Live updated, and on the other one, it can use that type on three is what needs to be updated. And so then we can say, okay, those sound safe. I mean, what could go wrong if we update something to do with system B? You know, it's not like we can break the world. So we're going to press enter, and then it goes ahead and updates the packages. And then it tells us uh, a little bit of a summary here of what happened. It says, all right, all of our, all of our changes are good. Okay, five, change one, unreachable zero. So okay is saying we had five tasks. They all completed successfully. Uh, failed zero means none of them None of them failed. Change, we changed things on one host, unreachable zero. All of the hosts were contactable. We didn't you know, have any timeouts or anything. Config management is basically the same as orchestration, but the difference is kind of in, in what your goal is. So this is a playbook that looks a lot like the other one, uh, but when you are doing orchestration, you're really saying, okay, I want to do this thing. Like, I want to deploy my web application. And that might be, okay, check out some Git, uh, push, push the files up to the rough system, restart Apache. So every time you run that, it's going to do these tasks. It's going to restart Apache every single time, for instance. Uh, so you're going to see these, these changes happen every single time. If you do it more than once, uh, you might see them happen again and again and again. Uh, so if you're doing something like you're notifying afterwards, uh, you have to be careful with those kinds of tasks because, oh, if I just run this in a loop, then it's going to notify me, you know, 20 times to send out an email for each of them. So orchestration tasks, you really, you, you're kind of training yourself, I don't want to run these over and over. A config management task, uh, when you write these, you're, you're taking care to say, okay, I don't want this to do anything if no changes occur, right? So if, if I'm not pushing out new configs, 
I don't want anything new to happen. I don't want any verification to go out and these things. And so by writing this playbook uh, for config management, you're kind of uh, training yourself, I'm not going to do these things that are going to happen every single time. So it's good conceptually to separate them in your mind. Uh, so we have post web server this time. What we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if we have a web server, what is a web server? A web server is going to have a patchy and mod SSL for us, and it's going to have our special config file. And that's what, how we're going to define our web server. So our tasks this time are yum again, the yum module. It's installed the HTTP and the mod SSL package. Uh, you notice we use present instead of latest. And what that does is it says, are these packages available, or are these packages installed on the remote system? That way, if they're already installed, it won't do anything. Uh, even if there's a later, later version, it won't do anything. It'll just say, okay, these are present, we're all good. Then the second thing is we copy, and we're gonna copy our HTTP local.conf file that we have written up to uh, Apache config directory. And the copy module is smart enough that it just says, okay, if it's present on the remote system and here, then I don't have to do anything. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and make sure that Apache has been started and it's enabled on boot. And once again, if it's already started and running, it's not going to reload that for us. Uh, that does mean that if the conf file changes, uh, we won't get uh, anything to change here. And that's kind of a, a personal decision. We can decide to, uh, to do that in different ways. Uh, for instance, handlers is probably the more appropriate way to do that. That way, uh, you can say whenever this, this task actually has a change, then go ahead and run the handler to restart Apache. And that way, you can just run this playbook and no changes occur all the way through here. Apache does not get restarted, but if this is the first time running without a new host, Apache will be started. Okay, so that's, that's a config manager task. In terms of how it looks, it basically looks the same as a playbook, uh, as a um, orchestration task. Uh, so what is Lightsaber? Lightsaber was created by Ralph Dean and several of the Fedora infrastructure contributors. Uh, they decided that they, you know, they use Ansible inside of Fedora infrastructure to, con to uh, configure all of their machines. A uh, little bit of Puppet uh, that they're slowly phasing out, lots of Ansible to do that. And they wanted to be able to do the same thing for their, for their home machines. So they created this collection of playbooks uh, that they're using to, to you know, work on their home machines. Uh, deploy things there that they need, like, uh, okay, I want the same shell configuration, uh, the same PMUC configuration, same Vim configuration for all of my machines when I have a user account on them. Uh, I want to be able to bring up uh, a personal vanity web server. I want to have an IRC bouncer. And so they've just written these roles and they said, oh, well, I'm going to share them with everyone else and see, you know, maybe they'll have ideas, maybe they'll find them useful and so on. Uh, so as opposed to the Fedora infrastructure, repository of Ansible playbooks. These are just really experimental. They're meant for maintaining home systems. Uh, so they're not, not always as polished, uh, but you know, people are playing around, finding the best practices as they go along. Uh, so what do we get out of using Lightsaber? Uh, Ansible is very, very flexible. You know, you create these playbook files, but it doesn't specify, oh, the playbook must live exactly in this one location or uh, I need to, I can break up these tasks into multiple playbooks or I can have them in one playbook and you know, what's the best way to do it. So, you know, the flexibility is great when, when you've got a task and you understand what you're doing and you can do exactly what you want. But when you're first starting out, you're like, well, I've got all these choices, what do I do? Uh, so it's, Lightsaber is kind of a skeleton. You check it out, you see what someone else has done and it's working for them. And then you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna like copy this and do it sort of the same, and you do that, and you're like, okay, well, that works. But I'm running into this problem, so I'm gonna change it, and so then you modify it, and, and you know, it gives you this skeleton, this framework that you can start off with, but as you go along, you can go ahead and you know, make, it, make it different. And then it's also a, weird, a way to share roles that work with Fedora and Apple. So Ansible has a, a website, galaxy.ansible.com, where people upload their roles, and then they can share them with the wider community. But the problem is that um, roles, uh, playbooks, can be very specific. You know, Because you're configuring an operating system, they can be very specific to the operating system that you are 
configuring for. <clears throat> so if you find a role, it might be that the person who wrote it wrote it for Ubuntu. And when you try and use it for Fedora, all of a sudden things don't work. They're using the app module. They have a package name, and it doesn't match what Fedora calls the package, and so on and so forth. So if you get the role from Lightsaber, then you know that uh, they've been used on Fedora and Apple, and therefore they're gonna they're gonna work for you uh, with a much higher likelihood. Okay, so let's do something with Lightsaber. Uh, first thing you have to do is you have to fork the repo. It's up on GitHub under under rel, um, rel for count. Uh, and then I like to create a, a, a place to do uh, my work. So inside of Lightsaber, there's, um, there's a directory called Playbook. So inside of the Playbook directory is kind of where you make your own configuration. So I, make, I made a directory with my username, and I put config and actions inside of there, because like I was telling you earlier, you know, there's orchestration actions that you're gonna, you're gonna do, and there's configuration which you're like, oh, I could run these on cron jobs if I want to, and it's not gonna, not gonna harm anything, not gonna spew out email to me all the time. So that's kind of how I organize things. Then you wanna create your own Ansible config file. At the top level of the Ansible, of the Lightsaber repo, they have an example of Ansible config. It's basically this, but with some comments. Uh, I like to create my own because, uh, for instance, the, the inventory file, we're gonna store all the host of Ansible knows about in the inventory file. I like to put that inside of my my own private playbook repo as well. Uh, the the Ansible config that they ship with that Lightsaber has it actually references the top level inventory file where everyone is storing their their hosts. And you can do that. What they're doing is they're creating a separate group inside for each person. So uh, Ralph has his that is all like in, belonging to a three bean group, and Remy the Cause Maker has his in his Utah group. Uh, so you can do it that way, but I just think it's cleaner to have a separate file. So I redefined the host file to be separate to be inside this uh, Playbook Badger uh, directory. Roles, I'll talk about roles in a little bit. They're the way that you take your playbook and you just separate out the part that's going to be generic and going to apply to anyone who wants to do a similar thing. Uh, so that roles path is going back to the top level of the Lightsaber repository with the directory there with roles that goes in with it. Uh, the Vault password file. Vault is a way to encrypt secrets like passwords and um, shared tokens, uh, uh, certificates, different things that you don't want to be shared with the whole world. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the in this repo, in the Lightsaber repo, they've got a little script called Vault Pass. So instead of saving your passwords into a single file, they have a script that helps manage that. I'm not going to get into it, but you can talk to Ralph Bean or Luke Mackin or someone if you want to, and, and they'll tell you how this script works and how it manages the passwords for them. SSH connection, this is kind of just optimization here. Uh, you can turn on pipelining. What pipelining does is, uh, the way Ansible works is you install it onto your, your machine, your local laptop, your you know central server node, whatever, and then uh, Ansible itself takes care of shipping the module that you're saying you want to invoke to the remote machine over SSH and then running it with Python. So if you have pipe, pipelining is true, it takes that module and it pushes it to scan Python standard in and then Python executes it. So you only need uh, one, uh, one SSH connection in order to do that. But if you have, if you have pipelining set to true, uh, then Python has to realize that you're sending it the data as a, as a pipe. And sometimes you can configure sudo or uh, SSH and it allocates a TTY for it and then Python gets confused. And when you do that, then the module doesn't work. It thinks that it's an interactive session and so certain syntax doesn't work the same in the interactive session. So if you're in an environment like that, you can't change your sudo settings, then set pipeline equals false and that'll work around the problem. SSHR is just kind of another optimization. Uh, we're using it here to forward the SSH agent to the remote machine, and that works around some problems. Uh, for instance, if you're using a synchronized module, it uses rsync under the hood. rsync uses SSH to talk to another machine. So if you're using synchronized and you don't have agent forwarding on, you can end up in a situation where you try and synchronize between two remote machines. You get to the first one successfully, it runs rsync, and it says, oops, uh, we've got a big error because I don't know how to authenticate to the other machine. 
turn an employee into an SSA agent on uh, a lead base, that kind of problem. Okay, and then in terms of organizing your playbook, so we've got this little directory off on our own. Uh, and if we want to, we can just drop our playbooks from before they were scanned along the playbooks, right? So like the configure Apache one, uh, it had the, the configure Apache playbook, the YAML file, and then it had that one soft, that one config file that we were copying. So we can just drop that into the config directory, and you know, anytime we want to bring up a new web server, we can just run that from there, and it will just work. Uh, the update host one where we did the yum update, that's kind of an action, so I dropped it in the actions folder. And that's all there is really to it, if that's all you want to do with it is, you know, have a way to organize your own stuff. But really, I mean, uh, you're going to want to get more in, in depth with what life here provides. So we'll get into that in the, in the couple slides. Uh, inventory, up till now, we've been doing the inventory purely on the command line. You know, you can do dash i switch and specify all of our hosts. Uh, but instead, you can create a, a file that shows all the hosts that you know about. You can use groups. Uh, you can use aliases. There's a lot of things that you can do in the inventory file. We can go ahead and talk to me and I can tell you about them. But this is just a very simple inventory file. Uh, it's kind of an INI format. I've got local host up at the top, uh, a VM, a VM, a virtual machines group, and I put Fedora 21 and 22 because those are the two virtual machines on my laptop. Bare metal, Rome, that's my laptop. Uh, Fedora, I decided that instead of relying on facts, I'd create my own group and all of my Fedora machines would be there so that I could know, okay, I want to do a Yum update, I'll just put a Fedora group. And then this is a test host group, and by saying children there, I'm saying take the children of this group and put it in there. So all of my VMs are test hosts. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to do something to all the ones that I call test hosts, uh, then I could use that group name. All right. So Lightsaber, the, the roles that are currently in Lightsaber make use of certain variables that they want to have defined uh, so that, you know, free bean stuff is different from, from your stuff, so it's different from my stuff. So like username, just the username that you're using in your local system so that like if we're going to create a new user on a, on a freshly installed box, it knows what the username should be. Uh, if you're using the IRC bouncer role, then if you use these two, the IRC name shouldn't put in it, so you just put those in. This is also for creating uh, a new user account. So you can use, uh, this is a dictionary, all users, and then the colon means, okay, so the dictionary that you use all users, uh, and then we're gonna create a list of users, each user uh, in the list, you know, if you're using a hyphen in the list, and then each of those is a dict, user is a username, create home bear is the home directory for that user. Uh, this one is used by the SSH lightsaber role, and then for login, so it's a, it's got a, a little, um, you know, a conditional inside of the role that says, okay, if root login is true, then in our configuration of SSH, we're going to set it to allow root login, and if it's false, then we'll turn that off. And then the common role is also used to create users, and you can specify a shell there. So I use the SH, so I specify the SH. There are better ways to define variables, and I'll get into some of those, but this is the way that uh, like Ralph set up his stuff, so I wanted to show it to you so that when you read it, you don't think, oh, well, Pusher did this one thing, but I don't see that here anywhere. So you can look at this, um, but I'll show you another way to do it. So. so roles, I talked about roles, mentioned them. I haven't really explained them. Roles encapsulate a set of tasks, just like playbooks, but they're a way to make it more generic. So the playbook, uh, we specify you know, the host, and there's other things you can specify at the playbook level, like variables and so on and so forth. So those are all kind of tied to your local environment. Uh, so the roles instead are allow you to parameterize um, the variables so that when you run this action, this logical set of tasks, uh, you're able to, to give it certain information, but somebody else who runs it can give it different information. Or if you have something like, oh, I, I want to install Apache on five different types of machines, one's a proxy server, and one does static web pages, and one does this, and one does that. Uh, being able to parameterize the role means that you can feed it different information depending on you know, what exactly you want it to do. Okay, so Lightsaber ships with several roles, and so like if I wanted to set up an IRC bouncer, there's an IRC role in that top level uh, Lightsaber roles directory. 
So this is what my playbook would need to look like in order to set up uh, my tutorial from one host to, be, to have an IRC bouncer. And it's just a, instead of a task area, I just say role, you need to roll IRC, and that's it. Uh, you see, remember, in the, the variables that we defined earlier, we defined up to user information, usernames, and whatever. These are the IRC bouncer role, so it's Ansible is gonna pick those up, uh, hand those off to the role, the role's gonna substitute them into the files, and then it'll just all work. Uh, as long as there's no bugs in that role, but, you know. Uh, so it makes things really simple if you can find a predefined role that already does what you want. Uh, so let's create our own role and see what that looks like. Uh, you go to the top level lightsaber checkout directory and then into roles, and then you want to create your own directory for the role. Let's create one for fed message. Uh, so there's Ansible, like I said, it has a, a website, galaxy.ansible.com, where users can upload roles. So it's a command line tool that works with roles with Ansible Galaxy, uh, but it just really works with roles, not just with Galaxy itself. So Ansible Galaxy init fed message will create this directory structure that is proper for a role, cd into the fed message directory that it created, and you can take a look. It has a bunch of a bunch of directories inside of it. Uh, each directory can have uh, YAML information or regular files. Uh, I will explain a few of them uh, in the talk, and a few of them we don't really need at all. Uh, so you can feel free to remove all the ones that you don't need. So this is going to be a very simple role. We won't need to deal with handlers or meta. Uh, we'll use templates instead of files, and we'll use defaults instead of bars. So I'm just going to get rid of those directories. If you want to know more about making roles, you can go ahead and ask me afterwards, and we can go over some of the other things you can do. So the first thing is you define your task. So this is like the task section of a playbook file. We don't have the host and other stuff up at the top, but we do have the tasks themselves. So in the task subdirectory, there's a name.yaml file. Go ahead and put your three tasks in here that are kind of how we're going to define fed message. So we're going to use the yum module again. This time there's two packages that we have to install. Uh, and then we're going to configure it by using the template module instead of the copy module. I'll get into what the template module can do. Uh, and then we'll take uh, this endpoints.py.j2 file. And because this is a role, look for it in the templates directory. And we'll go ahead and run the template module to template in our variables. And then it'll drop it off on the remote machine in a set of fed message directories. And then we'll use service again, use all three service, in order to restart the service on the remote machine. So this is like the task from the role. It's pretty simple. But once you know how to make a playbook, this is just you know an extension of that. Here's the template endpoints of pi to j2. We put it in that templates directory so that Ansible knows where to find it when it's processing this role. And it, it's just a basic uh, fed message um, config file. If you freshly install the package and look at it, it looks almost exactly like this. Except for this line here, you can see the, the double curly braces. Fed message underscore server. That's a variable that Ansible is that we're going to set in Ansible. And then it will go ahead and uh, substitute the value of the variable into the template before it pushes it over. That way, you know, you can. At your site, you can set fed message server to one thing, but at someone else's site, they can set it to something else. In the defaults subdirectory, we are going to set that variable to some default value. And there's two ways that you can set variables. There's the defaults directory and the bars directory. The reason I'm using defaults is that it's easier to override. So there's like a precedence order of where you can get bars from, the inventory file, things hold bus variables, uh, the the playbook itself to hold variables. You can get them from all these places. A role default is kind of the lowest on the totem pole. So that make, means that, okay, we're going to set fed message server to localhost here, but anyone who wants to override this is going to have an easy time of doing it. If I put it in bars, it's slightly higher precedence, so there's certain places where it will not override from. And so uh, use that for you know, things that you, you're, you're more sure you want. This is what the role directory tree looks like. Now that we've got every, all the files in place, there's uh, the default subdirectory with the name.yaml that flows the, the, uh, the bars that you get from. There's a readme file you can fill out in with information about your role if you want to let other people know what's going on. Tasks, 
workflows put uh, the main.yaml that has your tasks just like in the playbook. Templates has endpoints that fight up day two, and Ansible will then know to look in templates for that file whenever it's referenced from, from a templates module. Okay, and then in our back in our private little area here, uh, we're going to set up the config for our dynamic server, and this is what it looks like. You know, it's pretty much like the IRC one, except that instead of relying on the variables that Ansible already knew, you see that we're passing in the parameter here as another entry to this dictionary. So role is a list of roles. We'll, we only have one role in this list. The role name is fed message, and then there's a comma, as we're setting fed message server equals Fedora 22. That's an objective log to be a full and not a equal time. I know. Okay, so anyways, that will override the low mode that we had earlier and we'll have Fedora 22 being substituted into the template. So that's the end. Uh, mm -hmm. If anybody has questions or comments or anything else, here are some links. Uh, Ansible is written by Michael DeHaan. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. Ansible, Ansible mm -hmm. is in the Fedora repo. Documentation at docs.ansible.com. Lightsaber is written by Ralph. And it's up on his GitHub page there. And if you like this presentation software, I appreciate that. Okay, questions? No questions? Okay, yeah. go ahead. So I noticed when you, you did the first few examples, you used the sudo, and mm -hmm. it, so it prompted you for a password. Where was it, was it prompting you for the, where was it acquiring root? On the local machine, uh, and then SSHing as root to the remote machine, or was it SSHing as you and then acquiring root there? So it SSHs as you, okay. and you can set that as a, as a, as a variable as well okay. for host if you want to. So you can say, okay, I've got a uh, site one user, and that's mm -hmm. what I want all of my customer site ones that are okay. going to use that user. So you can set Ansible SSH user. It uses that user to SSH over, and then once it's there, then it uses sudo to get permissions. Okay. Can it just use SSH keys without needing sudo at all? I mean, yes. So, okay. so like the first um, <coughs> because mounting my home directory over NFS to everything would be bad. Right. Know, and, you know, I got four Kerberos tickets and. Uh, that one. So. Even further back. It was way. Further. So this one. If you notice, I've got sudo true here. Mm -hmm. So if I don't specify dash dash sudo on the command line, I need to do dash capital K, it'll prompt for my sudo password. But for these, it will not use uh, sudo. It'll just SSH in and run these commands because they don't need to have okay. root permissions. But then when it gets down to here, then it will SSH in, use sudo, because you do need root permissions for that. Okay, because I generally have like a SSH key, SSH key with a really big password that mm -hmm. lets me get in as root mm -hmm. to yeah. all, yeah. Yeah, so if you if you have root, just take out the sudo from everywhere okay. and use um, use ansible underscore ssh underscore user equals sudo. Oh, okay. And then okay. it'll ssh it. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, great. Well, We're done. If you want to, you know, talk to me about examples or anything, problems that you're having, feel free. Nope.